Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of uh, this Dashboard Gear tutorial. Today we're going to talk about Analysis Services Security. Uh, we get asked a lot about how to secure various cubes in analysis services. So today I wanted to go through the process with you as far as how to define users, who can access, and what they can access. So first of all, to define security on cubes, that is done through the SQL Management Studio tool. The first thing you do is connect to analysis services. So you would do connect, analysis services, you'd put in your server name and select connect. I've already done that over here, so it's on the left-hand side. Once that's connected, it's going to show you various databases that you have available uh, to define that security for. Um, how security is defined is through what are called roles. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a role for each type of user security that you want to define on those cubes. So for instance, I'm going to go into a database that I have called Lawson DW. This is a financial and supply chain uh, database that I have on my local laptop. Um, underneath that are a series of roles. Now to define security, what you're going to want to do is select new role. What that's going to do is bring up a dialog box. Now a role is a unique combination of permissions. So what you're going to want to do on this role is if you have certain users that can access certain cubes, then you'll define a role for, e for each of those combinations. So for this particular role, I'm going to say um, all view all cubes. And I'll do a read the definition. Then you just start walking down this list for as deep as you need to apply security. The next layer down is the membership. In the membership of the roles, what you're going to do is you're going to select add. You'll enter in here each of the users or AD groups that you want to grant access to this particular role. So um, I'm going to skip that step for today, but what you would do is just put in the users that, or roles, AD roles that you wanted to have access to and select OK and that will put those in the list. The next thing we're going to do is define the data source access that we have. You're just going to select read. Then we're going to define the cubes that they can see as part of this role. You'll notice there's access here and a local drill through. What you're going to do to grant someone access to a cube is just go down the list of access and select read next to each cube that you would like to define. Now in this one I said view all cubes but in the, for the sake of time, I'm just going to say read on a few of those. What local cube slash drill through is, is going to allow the user to more or less double click on a cell when they're in Excel to get additional details about that. Basically to dump all the detail facts related to that particular intersection of cells. If you want to grant that ability to users, you would switch this uh, setting to drill through. Now. I usually don't turn on local cube access. You'll notice under here it says drill through and local cube access or just drill through or none. Uh, local cube access allows users to export the data to a, what, a local cube file. Um, usually organizations don't like to do that. So what I do is I either have none or drill through. The default is none where it doesn't allow drill through, but it's pretty common to turn on drill through, through especially for uh, seasoned users. Now the only downfall in the drill through is that if a user is not familiar with the underlying data it will dump a lot of data depending on what they're looking at. So make sure you only turn on drill through access for those users that you've educated on the process of drill through. So for example on the GL transaction cube if we're looking at an intersection pretty high up, it's going to dump all the individual transactions that make up the number you're looking at. So make sure that whatever users are, are looking at the data, they're familiar with that they're far enough down in that they're going to not have an overwhelming number of transactions uh, exported to Excel. So that's what the drill through access does. Now if we just stopped at this point by saying OK, that would have given access to those users we put in the membership to these cubes we put here and they'd have full access at that point. 
Another common scenario that we run into though is that I only want to give access to users to certain companies or account units. So they want to further define that security. If you can avoid doing that, it'll make your life much easier. But I, I understand that in the, the real world we need to do that occasionally. And so in that case, what we're going to do is just go further down the security access here. You'll notice there's cell data, dimensions where you can turn on or off specific dimensions. But the, the one that's most common is dimension data. So we've granted access to those cubes, but we also might want to grant access to specific data within specific dimensions. Now, so how you would do that is this dimension data tab will list all the dimensions here at the top. So let's say I wanted to grant access to a specific company for this particular role. So they would see all cubes for a particular company. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go to my company's dimension and say OK on that. It's going to list here all the different attributes that are part of that dimension, but maybe I wanted to just do this by company number. And this particular user, I wanted, or this role, I should say, I wanted to give access to specific companies. What I'll do is I'll deselect all members. I will then select the company or companies that I would like to give them access to. And then what I need to do is one more step in that I, I'll need to go to the advanced tab and what I always do is I always select this um, default member as well so by by default it doesn't do that but if you want to enforce that the security is always enforced you need to add a default member of all and that what that will do is that will ensure that every time this dimension is uh, or this dimension is part of a cube that you're looking at it will default at least one usage of it so it'll apply the security without that it'll only apply the security when you actually use that dimension but in our case we always want to see a specific company or filter a specific company so what you'll do is you'll say I want to enter a default member you'll do this little edit at MDX button and then what you'll do is you'll you'll select here under the company number I'm gonna go under company number actually I'll go under the members and I'll say all companies and so oops I always do that what you want to do that's a common thing if you just select the value it's going to uh, exit but what I want to do is double click that all companies um, so that it uh, so that it selects up above so if I double click all companies it'll put it up in the formula up above then I select OK so now what that's going to do is say it's always going to default to all companies um, or use a member of all companies it will still filter based on the members that I have here but it will enforce that this dimension is used on the view then one last note I want to make and that's on this enable visual totals most of the time I select the checkbox on that enable visual totals what this is doing is saying that when you're looking at a um, view in Excel that's using this particular dimension it's going to filter the total amounts for just the companies I can see if I don't check this when I see the total of something it's going to include all companies even though I can only see two now it won't let me go down and get the details below that um, but for the totals it will include all but what I find is most of the time people want the totals that people to see to just be for the companies they have access as well so in that case you'll want to check this enable visual totals it's now at this point that I'll select OK and what that will do is it will set up uh, this role by giving me access to to those particular cubes for those particular companies if I go back in here uh, on the properties for that and I'm going to go back down to this dimension data because I want to mention one more thing on that and that is when I come back in here I need to go down and I'll find the company's dimension that I set that security on you'll notice that it'll it'll say attribute security defined in parentheses next to it that's how you'll know that a filter has been applied to it uh, and if I select that it and go underneath the company number where I applied it it will show me one thing I want to mention here on these two values of select all members and deselect all members you'll notice I, se I set deselect all members and that's very important you do that rather than select all members and really what it is is the difference between automatically giving people access to values 
versus having to explicitly give them access to values. So for instance, if we add a new company to our uh, system, if I had select all members checked, it will give them access to those companies. What I want to do is, though is deselect and, and make sure that when I do that, I'm only giving people access to the ones I specifically set. So that's why it's important to say this deselect all and then pick the ones that you want to give them access to. So that's really it as far as defining uh, security on cubes. Uh, once you do one, uh, there is a shortcut to copy. And that is, if I wanted to do additional uh, roles, I can right click on one that I've set up and say duplicate. Uh, that will copy this role. It'll allow me to give it a new name, create a new copy, and then just change from there. So with that in mind, um, you can quickly set up additional roles once you're done. But that's, that's all that it takes to grant users access to those uh, cubes. Thank you for uh, listening and we look forward to giving you an additional uh, topics in the future.